Tuesdays are the day that we talk with Dr. Bob Oliveri, and welcome once again to the studio, Dr. Bob. It's nice to have you here, and a very interesting topic for discussion today, something that I might not expect from a chiropractic uh, perspective. Yes, we're going to be talking about the five love languages, and uh, why we're talking about it, part of it is because uh, the people that go through our Advanced Feel Great in Eight uh, program, um, it, we involve stress reduction, and if you really think about it, Phil, like when you talk about stress in someone's life, you know, you have to look at sometimes relationships, right? So, you Mm -hmm. know, life is hard. Sometimes people talk about stress at work, but also stress at home, you know, so relationships with your children, relationships with your spouse. And so what we, what we do as part of this program is we give our patients the ability to learn how to better communicate with their spouse. Because let's face it, men and women are different. Right. There's yeah, a lot like of the whole Venus and Mars thing. Right. right? There's many books written on that. Mm-hmm. There's many, many different relationship things out there. And, you know, as as a functional neurologist, our brains are actually set up different. So when we're studying this, men and women are going to communicate differently. When you, if you really think about this, we have two different hemispheres of our brain, right? We have the left brain, which does totally different things than our right brain does. Our, our left brain is extremely analytical. It's very, very logical in sequence. That's where most men try to think out of, right? The right brain is more artistic and a little bit emotional. And so what happens with is in the actual anatomy, the actual structure of somebody's brain, women have a larger connection between the two hemispheres. It's an area called corpus callosum, and it's just an anatomical fact. So females have the ability to both look, think logically and emotionally at the same time, where men have more of a tendency to go and and try to do something a little bit logically. They try to fix things. Mm -hmm. So when they start talking about in the Venus and Mars, the hunters and gatherers, Mm -hmm. that type of thing, it's a big reason why, like let's say if you're hunting and you give a guy a gun and say, here, you need to provide for your family, go shoot a deer. Mm and you do the same thing with a female, she's gonna grab the gun, she can equally shoot as well, if not better, right. you know, but she's also gonna see that that's Bambi, and Bambi has a family, mm-hmm. and you know, so she doesn't wanna pull the trigger because she has an emotional side to this, mm-hmm. where the guy has a project to do and he's gonna go and finish it, because that's what he's designed to do innately, where a female's just gonna be a little bit more nurturing with that. So that's really important when you're communicating with, with your significant other, really kind of like understanding that. You know, I, I always, uh, you know, when I, when I talk to friends, I always say, you know, with men, you have to kind of, you know, and I can only speak from a man standpoint, but right. you have to kind of like at least give them the benefit of the doubt of, of, of their intention because we don't always say things properly. We may not always express ourselves like we're trying to do. So it may sound like we're telling somebody to do something or, or, or just not asking them to do something as opposed to, and, and, and then trying to argue their point in why they're trying to be correct. They're trying to be right, where you're just crushing you know, a, a girl emotionally as you're doing that, you know, mm-hmm. in, in an attempt and, 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 and he's not trying to do that at all. He's just trying to express himself so she can understand you're speaking two different languages. So now no matter how hard he's trying to do that, he's just speaking a different language than what she's understanding. So what if there was a test out there to be able to actually understand a little bit better about what makes a person's needs, how can you meet somebody's needs? Because everybody's a little bit different. So there is a test out there called five love languages. And five love languages allow you to actually understand what's important to the person you're communicating to. And it's very interesting because, you know, if you're in a relationship, you should be doing this. And and I'm going to give you the website. You can do this as a couple because, you know, quite often you don't realize when you think, you know, I'm going out there and I'm doing this for her. I'm doing this for her. I'm providing a house and she's got a car and she's got all these things. I work my tail off because she wants and she wants and she wants. And really, that's not what she needs from you. And, And that's not what she even is looking for. And, and it may have been actually in the relationship, maybe that's what you started out wanting, you know, but later on, it may be, that's not really, really what you want. And that's where I start to see, you know, a lot of breakdown in that. So we're going to talk about how brain chemistry begins to work, how it's what happens during those first two magical years when no matter what anything anybody (laughs) says, it's beautiful, it's Mm -hmm. loving, it's caring. Oh, baby, I love you. You're wonderful. You're spectacular. You know, you're funny, smart, witty, and everything is so great to where 
your chemistry begins to change a little bit and your needs begin to change a little bit. I heard a comedian do a routine about this this whole thing where, you know, when, when they first met the guy and the girl, everything, as you said, was wonderful. And, and then at some point, it's like, you know, the, the guy does the same thing he's always done and the gal's like, doesn't doesn't accept it or doesn't like it, and what 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 changed in that t- in amount of time? Well, the book is interesting because it opens up with three scenarios of a gentleman that was married three times, mm-hmm. and he he talks about each one of his relationships and how each and every one of those were different, and he was thinking he didn't really change, you know, and uh, the reality of it is everybody changes, mm-hmm. you know, no matter who changes, and your actual brain chemistry changes, so. So what you know the thrill of all the the excitement and everything enjoy that but you will see that's why people oftentimes are married multiple times seeking this ideal situation that doesn't really come into play mm-hmm. so you have to be on the same page you have to you have to be able to communicate with one another and you grow into a deeper love you grow into uh, a more caring love and uh, we're going to talk about how that affects neurologically how that affects your overall health and uh, um, I'm very excited to uh, continue on the topic all right well we're talking with Dr. Bob Oliveri as we always do on Tuesdays uh, the number for the office if you need more information about any of the topics discussed is 609-886-8585 we'll be back with more with Dr. Bob Oliveri right here on 106.3 The Shore. 106. You're listening to our Tuesdays with Dr. Bob, as we always do every Tuesday. Dr. Bob uh, talking about the five love languages today. Quite an interesting topic. You know, it's funny because love is the most important world in human language. Really? Mm -hmm. You know, everybody wants to be in love. But it's also really the most confusing because what love is to one person is different than what love is to someone else. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, it's in every song out there from the old old time stuff as love makes the world go round and love is a many splendored thing and all those things to every single sh- uh, song that's going to uh, be played on the radio today. You know, everybody wants that feeling because the feeling inside is unlike anything else. You know, it's not just the radio, Dr. Bob. I mean, every movie, there's so many of these, as we like to call them, chick flicks, but, uh, you know, you've got these uh, love story movies and TV shows where, it's just put up on a pedestal and everybody's searching for that perfect relationship. They think that, you know, uh, there's some sort of magic that's going to happen and, and a lot of times it does happen. Yeah, I mean, I do believe in that. I will tell you, I'm, I'm without a doubt a romantic and I do believe in the, in the in that. I love the, the first part of the, the um, you know, the overwhelming, you know, emotional ties, but I don't believe that over a couple years it goes away. Mm -hmm. I just think you just really need to have both people on the same plane really looking for the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I think you can spark a relationship to go into, uh, you know, you know, a, a corner tavern or, or, or a restaurant once a week and just like really enjoying the meal, really enjoying the company, really enjoying the food. So, I, and that can happen for years and years and years and years. So I, I just, you know, I think if you're, if you're compatible, we really you have similar interests, which is a huge thing you can share in similar conversations because I think over a period of time, uh, uh, you have to have some commonality, you know, common interests and things that you do together and, and things apart. Well, differences are important too because they, well, they say opposites attract and I've certainly found that in my relationships that, you know, opposites do have advantages. Absolutely, huge advantages because it brings more things to talk about at the table, mm-hmm. you know, so, you know, it's just that differences and disagreements are two totally different things. Mm-hmm. So being on the same plane. Well, how, how, your, how your brain works, you know, love is really, really interesting because it really is a brain activity. You know, what it does is it increases dopamine in your brain which brings you like a sense of euphoria. You know, uh, uh, dopamine is responsible for pleasure reward pathways. And so all the dopaminergic pathways um, uh, will fire when you're in love. And oftentimes, you know, um, the, it's the same circuitry as addiction. So it's the same exact thing. So like, you know, if somebody is addicted to a hardcore drug like cocaine, it's still firing those dopamine pathways. So like, like when they all, you know, there's a lot of old school songs, love is a drug. It, it, it really is. And so. And also Robert Palmer, addicted to love. Yep, it's true. About it's that. true. And oftentimes people, you know, like the need to feel loved is a primary uh, human emotion. I mean, it, and, and some people feel the need for love so bad that they seek it out from whomever they can get it. And that's when it starts to get into be bad relationships. Um, often not really stepping back and saying, okay, is this really the best choice for me? You know, he may be or she may be beautiful, sexy, you know, um, you know, you know, desirable and all those things. But the reality of it and, and still can be like major attraction. But is it really the best choice for me in the long run? Mm-hmm. And we don't we don't often look at that, you know, so so I think that 
comes with time, but I do see relationships that, you know, they're going in in the 20s and it carries over into the 30s and carries over into the 40s, 50s, you know, and 60s, you know, so chasing something that's not really attainable. So you have to see, you have to appreciate what you have over a period of time. Mm -hmm. Um, But they often overlook the qualities that you really, really need to have. So let's talk a little bit about the brain chemistry. What happens with this is as you increase the dopamine in your brain, which is is the one, um, uh, it also increases cortisol. And we test for this in our Feel Great Nate uh, uh, um, uh, program. So as cortisol increases, serotonin begins to decrease. So what happens is this leads to this in- intense pleasure, like like unbelievable pleasure going on in your brain when you see somebody, the anticipation of seeing somebody. But it also creates a little bit of stress, a little bit of anxiety in, in combination of that. So it almost gives you the, the, the feeling of in- intoxication. Like if you're really, really looking and seeking and can't wait to see somebody, your brain chemistry is overloading i mean it's really firing that's actually really not that healthy um because what happens is it you know you'll, your heart starts to race a little bit your palms begin to sweat and you, you have that that's okay for like the first you know couple you know weeks or months when that starts to go on all the time that actually leads into some healthy things mm. but as love matures your body begins to change a little bit once there's an increase in trust uh, in those relationships, the stress decreases, the anxiety decreases. Then serotonin, which is pretty much the the, the happy hormone, will increase, and uh, um, any of the, the the sense of like uh, uh, neediness and obsession begins to decrease. You know, and that's when you'll start to see, like, with from a guy's standpoint, some girls like crazy over me. She's like, she's a little lutz, you know, mm-hmm. or vice versa. A guy gets to be like stalking that type of thing. Yeah, like that's, overwhelming or, right. or smothering. Right. That would so when it begins. Well, some people need that. You know, it depends upon relationships that you came from. Mm-hmm. You know, if you don't get any, you seek the other thing. Mm-hmm. Always, always. Mm-hmm. It's never not that. So you'll always seek what you didn't have before. So one relationship is usually totally different, but they end up with somebody that's somewhere in between the two. Got Almost, almost always. Mm-hmm. Um, but also what happens with this is oxytocin actually increases. Now, oxytocin, you'll hear about. It's the love hormone. And you'll hear about that when, when people are pregnant, you know, girls are, are, are pregnant. There's an increase in that. But, but it, uh, oxytocin actually increases social bonding. But it's when you are watching that romantic movie that increases. When you're out dancing with somebody that you're really enjoying oxytocin increases you know it's part of the birth process it's part of actually you know uh, sexual orgasms i mean you're that 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 brain chemistry really brings that on so later on after all that the brain begins to produce it uh, um what they call a uh, corticotropin releasing factor and that solidifies the relationship that's when you're separated like when you're not together right. you really start to miss somebody mm-hmm. because that increases that uh, crf and it produces like an unpleasant feeling in your body mm-hmm. so when you see them again you feel like alleviated because you're together again and that's you know that's when that's when your 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 brain chemistry is really really like firing the way it's supposed to when you're not you're not you know, too hyper with it but really really missing somebody and missing being in their presence and that's as a relationship begins to grow and that's where the basis of love starts now what we're going to talk about now is we're going to say okay now how do you communicate in a different way since men and women we just talked about are different their right. brains are different right their, their, their neurochemistry is the same but it fires a little different in parts of the brain what can we do now to actually understand what I need to do to make my spouse happy, my partner happy. What are they seeking from me in my relationship? And it's actually pretty clear. And there's five different things. And we're going to talk about those in a minute. All right, great. We're talking with Dr. Bob. And, and apparently lo- there is some sort of science to love. Uh, how about that? Very interesting. There sure is. More about this topic when we continue on 106.3 The Shore. 106.3 The Shore. Tuesday, the day that we speak with Dr. Bob Oliveri, and uh, today we're speaking with him again in the studio, but this time it's about the five love languages, something I wouldn't expect from a chiropractor, but uh, you're more than just a chiropractor, Dr. Bob. Well, we, we use this as a, one of the tools in our uh, like stress reduction, but really in our in our advanced uh, Feel Great Nate uh, program. So when people, like this is a very, Feel Great Nate, the, the advanced program is a personalized individual um, health program and re- the reality of it is, is 
you know, health is part of mental, physical, you know, spiritual, emotional well-being, you know, so you want to make sure that, you know, when your emotional well-being is good, it's going to affect your physiology. So sometimes relationships get into play there. So if during consultations and those types of things, people say, you know, I really want to be able to improve the quality of my relationships with my children. I want to improve the quality of relationships with with my spouse. Um, and also even even with coworkers, you know, what can we do to uh, better understand communication? If I really understood what you you were thinking most of the time life would be perfect right you know um or maybe not uh you know you may, maybe not but 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 it is at least know you you know where you stand so in this particular thing if it's somebody that you really care about mm-hmm. you really want to know what can you do to be able to communicate with them better and actually make them happy because honestly when the person that you're with is happy it makes you happy yes, if you're if you're a giver it depends upon the personality there are people that just like to receive yeah. you know everything you know is all about them their entire world is about them you know, um, and you know they don't make they don't have lasting relationships. You know, if it, if it has to do with you know, oh, this person makes me happy, this person makes me happy. You know, if it's all me, me, me in a, in a conversation, they're never really going to be happy because at some point in time, the person may feel the other person giving may be saying, "Hey, I want something a little right. bit in return." And the other thing you say about stress reduction, I mean, when when you talk about like work, for for example, you know, uh, there may not be much you can do uh, to alleviate stress from work. So to, to alleviate it in other areas is very helpful. Absolutely, and cortisol is always the killer. Cortisol is the stress hormone. You know, we, we do specific testing for cortisol levels. You know, your adrenal stress index is looking at your stress hormone. And over a period of time, cortisol wreaks havoc on your body. I mean, I mean, from from horrible things that go on in your brain to horrible things that go on in your body. So it's it, it's so important. It's one of the three major tests that we're doing in the advanced three, uh, Feel Great and Eight program. So anything you can do to help lessen that is great. So when we what we do is um, if you go online, you can go on to uh, and you can Google five love languages dot com and there'll be a profile and you can do profile for couples or individual. And there's a series of questions that you're going to answer. And, you know, it's only going to take you maybe about 10 minutes, Mm -hmm. but it's going to give you an idea of really what's important for you in order for your, 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 your significant other to have to better communicate with you. So the three results or five results that will actually come up are acts of service. We're going to talk about each and every one of these Mm -hmm. words of affirmation, quality time, receiving gifts and physical touch. Mm-hmm. So could you imagine that if somebody's, you know, uh, it, it's important for them to receive like little gifts during the course of the day and everything, and all you're doing is giving words of affirmation. Mm-hmm. Oh, you look so beautiful and everything. Well, words are meaningless to that person. It doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. They they really want to, fact, if you were at the grocery store, pick up a candy bar and just say, here, I was thinking of you. That is more meaningful that, to them than saying, oh, you look beautiful this morning. You know, and there's a lot of people that, that, you know, these, these, these particular categories are really important. So we'll get into a little bit of these. I'm going to talk a little bit about this, but it's a great test. But if you have like acts of service, which is, is, is mine, you know, I want somebody that's working side by side with me to accomplish a common goal. Mm-hmm. So if we're in a relationship, I kind of like, and it doesn't necessarily, you're, you're, you're doing everything the same, even if, you know, one's a stay at home, you know, wife and, or, 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 or husband or whatever, but just like the little things to be able to accomplish what your co- common goal is. If it's to raise the family. Family, you know what's important to you so acts of service were, were high on me but I was very very closely followed by quality time and physical touch which were tie you know I could care less personally about words of affirmation it doesn't it's not you know it's not that important to me okay. and and uh, and receiving gifts is like like zero for me I don't mm-hmm. really you know I'm, I'm good with that so everybody's a little bit different but if somebody you know keeps on like giving me actually sometimes when people give me gifts it almost makes me feel a little guilty you know I was like uh, you know thanks so um, I don't need that. So if somebody is trying to show me that they they love me by giving me gifts, that's not that's not important. But an act of service saying, "Hey, I have I have a um, I have to get this done and this done and this done today. Can you take something off of my plate?" Mm-hmm. That to me is speaking volumes of how much they love me. You know, it's like, "Wow, let's this is like freeing up my time." And the reality in my mind is getting some things off my plate so I can spend quality time with you. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, you know, so that's why I think they're all kind of like interrelated. I want to spend quality time with you, but I have to get this stuff done in order for me to get through the day. In in my experience, I've I've found that like people like you to pay attention to them. 
Like if you go through your life just thinking about yourself, as you said, it's all about me, 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 that's uh, that's not good. But if you pay attention to the other person and know what their needs are, and then this test is very helpful to understand those needs, then you can do what they need. Right, no, I, lots of times people have a list of things that they really want. The older I get, I really want somebody to be considerate of my feelings. Like I wanna be, like if I'm in the grocery store, I wanna text and say, hey babe, how are you? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm over here at the grocery store, can I pick you up something while you're here? Right. You know, that I just think is basic consideration. You'd be surprised how that doesn't even really kind of occur. Just during the course of the day, you know, sending a couple of little happy faces with a, you know, like a, you know, a kiss or something like that, thinking of you, it really miss you. It just be little things. Yeah, you know, it doesn't it, have to be a big deal. Just but, something very, you may think it's very, you know, very minuscule, but to it, the other person, it may be huge. Right. Right, exactly. I mean, I mean that type of stuff is huge for me. Like small little communication throughout the course of the day is mm -hmm. massive to me. You know, it's just kind of like thinking of you and and, and whatever it is. You know, whatever there, there was. Uh, but to other people, it doesn't really mean anything. So when you take this test, and we're going to talk about what each one of these things mean okay. in a second. But when you take this test, it will enlighten you, I think, to what the, that other person's needs are. We'll be back with more with Dr. Bob Oliveri, uh, talking about the uh, five love languages. Very interesting topic today. Thanks for staying with us on this Tuesday. We're here with Dr. Bob Oliveri, as we always are on Tuesdays. And Dr. Bob is talking today about the five love languages. There's actually a test that you can uh, kind of help you out and reduce stress. This is very interesting stuff, Dr. Bob. Sure. You want to Google this, go in and just uh, 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 you can download the test itself. It's called five lung, uh, love languages com. And uh, if you go into profile for couples or profile for uh, individuals, and it's great. And and uh, I was saying that the, the, the answers primarily that you'll come up with are acts of service, words of affirmation, quality time, receiving gifts, and personal touch. So if we talk a little bit about acts of service, I mean, really, honestly, can you like uh, vacuum floors for somebody and actually be showing somebody that it's an expression of love? You know, absolutely. Like this, like I said, this is mine. Mm -hmm. Anything you can do to ease the burden uh, of responsibilities that, that that weigh on like an acts of service person speaks volumes to them. You know, anything that you can do to make their life a little bit less stressful. Mm -hmm. Most of these people really have a lot of things going on in their life, you know, and so they do need somebody. You know, it's not like they're showing up to a nine to five job and it's kind of like a really kind of simple thing. You know, the, that that type of a thing where you, 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 you don't have a whole lot of things on your list. You do the same thing each and every day and there's not a whole lot of things that you're you know that, that 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 really kind of those people aren't really acts of service people you know usually acts of service people are the people that have a lot of things going on with themselves and they just you know they they seek help from people they don't like to ask help from people so when people actually give them that help it is the world to them um and 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 they, you know the words that they mo you know he or she really wants to hear is you know let me help you with that let me let me do that if you have like laziness or broken promises or or making more work for them uh, speaks volumes to this language that that, that their, your feelings don't matter you know if they if they're like if you promise you're going to help somebody and they don't follow through on any of that stuff that's saying you know you really don't care mm. so. Uh, acts of service are important. Words of affirmation is another one. You know, actions don't always speak louder than words. They really don't. But in this love language, unsolicited compliments mean the world to them. Hearing I love you are extremely important. You know, you're so beautiful, so important to, 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 to hear them. You know, it, it, and they need to hear that all the time. Um, uh, and, uh, and there's reason behind that. You know, uh, what happens is... Um, like insults can leave them shattered and they're they're not easily forgotten for a person like this so if you're saying something like this is important for men because quite often men are trying to speak not frankly but they're trying to to um get a point across right. but in doing so um you may say something that's a little discouraging to somebody that goes directly to the heart and the soul of this particular person that needs words of affirmation so so and 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 quite often you can't take them back and you'll quite often hear somebody say well i remember when you said and the guy that can't even remember right. when they said that right they said it they said it 6 months ago mm -hmm. and they and and the and here's the key they didn't mean it that way. Mm -hmm. You know, they were just trying to get their point across, but it speaks daggers into the heart of somebody that needs words of affirmation. You know, kindness, encouraging, positive words are truly life-giving to this particular person. Uh, the next one is quality time. So in the, in the concept of quality time, uh, uh, saying I love you doesn't mean anything. You know, it, it could mean, it doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. They, they want to be there for this person. They want to be right next to the person all the time. 
in reality, you know, with the TV off, you know, uh, the knife and fork down, right. and all the chores are taken off, mm-hmm. you know, this is significant for this particular person to truly feel loved. There's no distraction. You're not talking to somebody and they're picking up the cell phone texting. Right. You know, if you're texting to somebody else, I mean, this is the way I feel anymore. If I'm out with somebody and they start texting all the time, they're not with me. Mm-hmm. You know, they're really not with me. Right. I remember, you know, when I first got divorced, I, I was on a dance floor with a girl and she picked up her phone and she was actually texting on the floor. I walked off the floor. Floor. On the dance floor. Yeah, she oh was doing goodness. that. You know, and, and I was like, and, and she goes, where'd you go? I said, she goes, why'd you leave me? I said, you left me on the dance floor. Mm-hmm. You left me. You were with somebody else. Yep. You know, so no matter what that was, it was more impor- important than dance. Because at that point in time, I wanted to, you know, just dance with mm-hmm. her. I didn't want anybody. If you want to go back to the, you know, thing and answer your friends, whatever, that's fine. But so those particular things, very, very important. Quality time. Receiving gifts. Is another one. Don't mistake this love language for materialism. Okay, so it's really important. It doesn't mean that the the, the person that likes receiving gifts just wants they're really materialistic. It's not. It's really the uh, the gift thrives on love, thoughtfulness, and the effort behind the gift. So if you speak this language, the perfect gift or gesture shows that that uh, uh, you're cared for and that you're 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 known and you're prized above what all else matter matters. So you're sacrificing a gift for them, you know. And and uh, again that. That doesn't register with me, but like a, a missed birthday, an anniversary, you know, or, or, or a thoughtless gift would be disastrous for this person. Mm-hmm. So if you're forgetting their birthday with a gift and everything, that's really, really horrible. So the absence of everyday uh, gestures. Gifts are are usually representative of love and gestures and treasures, you know, so the gift is just a symbol of that you care. It doesn't have to be a huge gift. It can be just something very simple. It doesn't, but, you know, yeah. I, I still think it really kind of gets into the, th- the aspect of don't miss my birthday, don't miss my, mm-hmm. you know, that type of thing. Yep. Um, and physical touch is the last, you know, uh, uh, and this language uh, isn't all about the bedroom either. You know, it's not all about sex or anything like that, right. but physical touch, you know, to, you know, who doesn't like to lay down on a table? You know, I, I guess you, there's a lot of people that don't, but just to lay down on the sofa, you know, have somebody just like curl up with you and watch a movie you know mm-hmm. i mean it's kind of cool thing even if you even if the intention is never to get through the movie just to get to sleep you know whatever just having that is really nice a person who primarily uh, language is physical touch is not surprisingly very touchy mm-hmm. hugs i'm an italian guy so yep. you know you kind of want that <laughs> i got um, that you know pats on the back holding hands you know thoughtful touches you know on the arms you know shoulder face nice you know somebody playing with your hair that that type of stuff mm-hmm. you know I, we used to call that grooming all the time like when we were you know when i, I was dating even uh-huh. when i was married you know um but it's kind of like you know you know it's nice some people don't like that but you know i think you know everybody's a little bit different and there are ways that can show you know excitement concern caring and loving so physical print pre, uh, presence are crucial and uh when it's neglected quite often you know this can be terrible for somebody that really needs that 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 quality touch and this sensitivity throughout the course of the day very interesting. The five love languages, and you say there's a way to go online and get yeah, this so, test? So, so go online. I mean, again, this is part of our program, but mm-hmm. if you go online, you can answer all these questions. And you, you want to do it as a couple, really. You want to take your, your significant other and do it together because it's so important to find out how you communicate with one another. It really is. You know, so like I know I've made plenty of mistakes in my past relationships. If I would have had this, this would have really, really, really cleared it up. I, my, my argumentative point of just trying to show how much I care doesn't matter. Shut your mouth, be quiet, you know, hug her. You know what I mean? Gotcha. Like that type, that type of stuff. And, uh, you know, it's lessons learned. You know, you grow each and every year. You know, uh, at least I do anyway. And uh, you try to learn. So I think that this is a, a great test, fivelovelanguages.com. And, uh, you, know, you know, use it to your, 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 the, the best of your ability. Thank you for sharing, Dr. Bob. I appreciate that. And uh, this Thursday, you have a peripheral neuropathy workshop? We do at 1 o'clock p.m. Uh, uh, if you come, you have to call the office to reserve a seat. It's always extremely well attended. So if you suffer from pins and needles down into your feet and, and uh, numbness and tingling and you're diagnosed with peripheral neuropathy, if you're, ta- if you're diabetic or, or you're taking certain types of uh, drugs for that, you know, uh, Lyrica, just come. And uh, you'll learn an awful lot about uh, a treatment program that we have is, that is highly successful. All right. Dr. Bob Oliveri, Oliveri Chiropractic, uh, Route uh, 47 in Rio Grande, 609-886-8585 is the number to call. Thanks again for joining us, Dr. Bob. Thanks for having me on. Dr. Bob. Thank